Welcome back to Buffers and Titrations. In part three of this unit, we're going to be talking about neutralization so that we can get into titration, which is a way to neutralize an acid in a base. Let's go. First of all, what is meant by neutralize? Well, neutralize means that stoichiometrically equal amounts usually that's the same number of moles amounts of acid and base are mixed. Equal amounts or let's say equal moles of acid and base are mixed together and so then they neutralize each other. So what's the pH of a solution that has been neutralized? A lot of you would think, I mean, logically it seems, if you have the same amount of acid as you have base, then the pH of the solution was going to be 7, but not necessarily. A solution that's going to be neutralized has a pH of anything. It could be 7, but it could also be greater than 7, or it could be less than 7. Like if you have a strong acid and a strong base, when you add them together, you're going to get just plain water, and the pH is going to be right at 7. But if you had a strong acid that you mixed with a weak base, at stoichiometrically equal amounts, you'll actually have more H3O plus than OH minus. So your pH will actually be less than 7. Or if you had a weak acid and a strong base, then at the stoichiometric point, or the neutralization point, you'll actually have more OH minus than H3O plus, and your pH will be greater than 7. So at the neutralization point, the pH does not have to be 7. It does not have to be 7. So what is the term for the point when the solution has been neutralized? This is called the equivalence point. If you look it up in the, on your textbook or the internet, sometimes they call them the stoichiometric point, but I will tend to call it the equivalence point because equal moles of acids and base have been mixed together. Let's look at the formula that we're going to use to solve for that. This is very, very similar to the dilution formula. Oops. M1V1 equals M2V2. So that was the molarity times the volume of one solution, the molarity times the volume of the other. It's just that this time, because we're talking about mixing acids and bases, the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid divided or equals the molarity of the base times the volume of the base times the number of H pluses or the number of OH minuses. This will come in handy if you had some sort of polyprotic acid like say H2SO4, then it would be 2, or some dibasic substance like CaOH2, then it would be 2. Typically, the number of moles of H plus and OH minus are going to be 1 each. Let's math it. How many milliliters of 0.25 molar KOH required to neutralize 30 milliliters of 0.5 molar HCl? Oh, 0.25 M. Remember, that's just OH minus. And then 30 milliliters of 0.5 mH plus. So the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid times the number of H pluses. This, this guy is monoprotic, so that's 1 H plus. Is the molarity of the base, 0.25 m times the volume of the base, times the number of OH minuses. This is monobasic, so the OH minus is 1. 0.5 times 30 divided by 0.25, x is equal to 60 milliliters. And that's it. x is equal to 60 milliliters. So what is the approximate pH of this solution? Well, since KOH is a strong base and HCl is a strong acid, the pH of this solution at this equivalence point will be equal to 7. When you mix a strong acid and a strong base, what you get is a salt and water. I'm going to go ahead and write down the equation. You get H2O and KCl. And remember, KCl is the 
salt of a strong acid and a strong base. So this has a pH of 7, and water has a pH of 7. So the whole thing has a pH of 7. Everybody's 7, everybody's good. So now we're going to find the concentration of CaOH2. Notice we're dibasic. If 20 milliliters of that CaOH2 is required to neutralize 50 milliliters of 0.75 molar HNO3, again we have strong acid and strong base. So we have the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid. It is okay here to use milliliters instead of liters because the units are going to cancel, times the number of H pluses in that solution. Equals the molarity of the base, who knows, times the volume of the base, 20 milliliters, times the number of OH minuses. This guy is dibasic, so it's 2. So we'll divide both sides by 20 and 2. That way these guys cancel. And we end up with x is equal to 0 0.938 more. And that's the concentration of the CaOH2. One last problem. How many milliliters of 0.1 molar acetic acid needed to neutralize 45 milliliters of 0.65 molar KOH, which is a strong base? We'll use the same thing, 0 0.1 molarity Hc2H3O2. Don't know the constant, don't know the volume. I do know that there's only one hydrogen. Then we have 0.65 for the base times 45 milliliters. Let's make that prettier. For the base times 1, KOH is monobasic. So we'll divide by both sides by 0.1 and we end up with x is equal to 292.5 milliliters. So the question, how many milliliters of the acetic acid? That's just at 292.5. But the next thing is, what is the approximate pH of the solution? Notice that we have a weak acid and a strong base. So it feels like at the end, we're going to lean towards the pH of a base. The pH should be greater than 7. But let's prove it. So we've got Hc2H3O2 and KOH. I'm just going to put OH minus because we know the K doesn't really matter. So then the hydrogen's going to mix with the OH minus to make water. And C2H3O2 minus. So if you look at your products, water has a pH of 7. We're totally fine. We've got even amounts of H plus and OH minus in water. But C2H3O2 minus is a conjugate base. C2H3O2 minus on its own as a basic salt with a pH greater than 7. If you want to put it another way, that C2H3O2 minus is going to react with that water to make acetic acid and OH. It's going to make more OH in that solution. I'll write that prettier, different color. OH. So check that out. Because we're making water and the conjugate base of a weak acid, then at the end, our pH is going to be a little bit basic because this C2H3O2- will make OH-. So what's the difference in the calculation for the strong, strong versus strong, weak? Nothing. The calculation is exactly the same. How to figure out how many milliliters or what is the concentration is exactly the same. The only difference is what the pH is going to be when we reach the equivalence point. But the calculation is exactly the same. All right, that is neutralization. Join me next time for titrations.